Well, I don't know about you, but peace was not the first word that I ever associated with John the Baptist. Don't we picture John the Baptist, you know, as this kind of wild-eyed, bug-eating holy man from the desert? He wraps himself in animal skins and preaches repentance down by the riverside. You know, when I think of peace, I don't first envision a Bible prophet calling me to repent of my sins. That's an image that actually makes me feel a little nervous. But in Mark's gospel, the one that we begin today with this chapter one, the gospel that will be featured in this coming church year, which begins this Advent, John the Baptist is not as angry as he is in the other gospels. In fact, it begins with this quote from the Book of Comfort from the great prophet Isaiah from chapter 40. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. This is not the John the Baptist of Matthew and Luke, who in chapter three can't stop there with words of comfort. He needs to continue to kind of rant about God's wrath. He, he goes on in those versions saying, you brood of vipers, the ax is laid to the root of the trees and every tree that does not bear fruit is torn down and thrown into the fire. Good Baptist stuff. But in Mark's version, John the Baptist really does fulfill Mark's promise there at the beginning, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. John the Baptist in Mark really does fulfill Isaiah's promise, the promise to bring good news of comfort to a people who are suffering, living under the oppression of the mighty and cruel Roman Empire. This John the Baptist actually preaches peace and repentance to the angry young men of his generation. So these verses from Isaiah 40 that John the Baptist quotes to set the stage for the arrival of Jesus are famous ones famous to musicians through song, and I wanted to share a few of them with you from Isaiah 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry out to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Do not fear, Isaiah says. See, the Lord God will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. I don't know, maybe it's because I broke my toe this last week, but it sounds very appealing to me, this image of getting to be carried along by Jesus, close to his heart. What a relief that is, how refreshing to be led beside the still waters, to have my soul restored. I mean, it's a great honor to get to follow Jesus, to be called as, as a disciple, but aren't there days when we get kind of tired of stumbling along and falling short, trying to keep up with Jesus? I know my kids probably felt that when they were little, and I tried to turn them into hikers. I don't know, I think maybe I saw the sound of music one too many times when I was a kid, but my fondest dream as a parent was to have all of these children and I would lead them up into the hills singing for joy and wearing matching outfits that I made myself. 
And John and I were both um, scouts, so, you know, we started them out early. We put them in those little baby backpacks, you know, and took them on hikes. And then as they got a little bit bigger, we got them their own little backpacks so that they could kind of trudge along behind in their own little water bottles. You know, that works out fine to a point. But you gotta really watch that tipping point when you've gone too far, because that's when the wailing and gnashing of teeth will begin <laughs> with biblical proportion. My last church back in California always had an annual spring retreat in May at Yosemite National Park. And one of those trips when my son Jacob was about eight or nine, I think, we decided it was time for a little bit of a bigger challenge. We had been down camping on the valley floor, looking up at the falls, and this year we would hike to the falls. But instead of the boring way of just up and down, we, would, we could see on the map there was a little trail where you could kind of go up to the falls and then kind of up and over and down a scenic switchback trail down back into the valley. It sounded lovely from the map. But it was not a topographical map, it turns out. We got to the top of Vernal Falls and we started up and over and then we continued up and we continued up and it got rockier and steeper and colder and there were little patches of snow there beside the trail in May. <laughs> and that's when my brave little hiker started to have his nervous breakdown. And that's when I started to pray in earnest. And I thought back, you know, probably it would have been a good, you know, kind of spiritual example to have prayed out loud. But I was doing that mom thing of trying not to show how very anxious I actually was. The sun was beginning to decline as there was no sign that we were going to go downhill anytime soon. But it turns out we made it to the top. And as we started down, I could see that there were switchbacks. And at each switchback, or most of them, you could get a little glimpse down into the valley again to see that beautiful sight of the peaceful Merced River down by our campsite. And I knew that there was no amount of threatening or cajoling my son that would get him to move but to lure him just to the next overlook was entirely possible. And I would be my cheerful self, oh look, doesn't the river look pretty? And doesn't the river look just a little bit closer? <laughs> so one step at a time, we finally made it back down. But I left that hike with an awareness that that beautiful world word wilderness sounds very pretty and very scenic until you get stuck there with a child too big to carry and too little to listen to reason. Lord, have mercy upon us. You know, eventually we do get to moments in our lives when the wilderness seems a little too much for us. When we are called upon to pray that prayer, help me. And that's when the good news of John the Baptist starts to make sense. When John says, I have baptized you with water, but the one who will follow me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit that John promises to come is not really fire and brimstone. The Holy Spirit is like refreshing cool water from an ever flowing stream. The Holy Spirit that Jesus brings is holy comfort, the kind that Isaiah promises. The Holy Spirit is holy peace. And Jesus knew the comfort of the Holy Spirit refreshing him like living waters in the wilderness. Because remember, that's where he fled 
at the beginning of his ministry, and that's where the angels ministered to him. That is the peace that Jesus promises to us, even today, through the Holy Spirit. The question is, during this busy Advent season, how is how we can find that peace. In the midst of our stressful lives, how do we find peace like a river in the swirl of all of our worries and pain and grief? Well, I think for one thing, if you'll pardon the advertisement, we can find it here at church in worship through prayer and sacrament, from fellowship, from the comforting words of scripture. We can find it in the way that John promised, I think, through repentance, through humility and repentance, admitting that we are not ourselves the source of all strength and wisdom, admitting to ourselves that we can't possibly do it all perfectly, our homes cannot look like those magazine pictures. We need to admit that sometimes we do need a savior. That is the way to peace. Our humanity in this confession is what draws us together. And as much as anything, I have to say, I think that's what impressed my son Jacob about that fateful hike. Not that we went on a challenging height and not not the scenery that we saw and not that we got to the end of our strength and patience and even beyond and not even that we made it down to the level place again. Hallelujah. But what I think impressed him most about that was that his ornery and headstrong mother for the first time in his young life actually admitted that she was wrong. <laughs> In the end, I had to ask him to forgive me for dragging him so far into the wilderness that he never wanted to go for a walk with me ever again. <laughs> Knowing and admitting our weakness may sound like something negative, but it really is the way to peace. The people in 12-step programs know this. It is the first step in knowing that we have to rely upon a higher power. We celebrate in, the, in this season getting to have a savior and not having to be a savior ourselves. Instead, all we do, need to do is to clear a little space in the wilderness of our lives to make room for Jesus Christ to come inside and carry us where we need to go. Thanks be to God for this good news. Amen.